I'd like to thank both of you for being here. Um, and um, uh, this is the Orlando Sentinel Editorial Board interview for Apopka City Commission. And um, we will be spending some time with our candidates, Nadia Anderson and Daryl Richardson. Um, also with me are the Editor-in-Chief of the Orlando Sentinel, Julie Anderson, and our Viewpoints Editor, Jay Ruddick. We are the Editorial Board of the Sentinel, and we also have our candidates, Nadia Anderson, who is um, a realtor and in the Apopka area, and uh, Daryl Richardson, who owns the Three Odd Guys Brewing. Did I get that right? Yes, great. And um, we're going to be spending uh, about a half an hour with our candidates, getting to know them, and talking about some of the issues in Apopka. But there is a lot of information about this race out there. So I think that voters have a really great choice in this race. Um, and so let's, I'm going to go ahead and dive in with our first question. Um, the, uh, there's been a lot of attention paid to the downtown area and how people want to see that redevelopment. And, um, and I wanted to know, what do you think is being left out of that plan? And we'll start with um, Ms. Anderson. Okay, I'm always the starter, okay. So yes, yeah, so just a few things. So Nadia Anderson here, I'm all, I'm actually the owner of a real estate brokerage here. So oh, in addition to, I'm a real estate broker. It's, and I also am the owner of a franchise, Jeremiah's Italian Ice. So I also own two different companies. So I just wanna make sure that's actually noted as well. In addition to that, so in regards to the downtown area and kind of what's missing in the downtown area, um, I think that right now, one of the challenges is, is getting new businesses, um, the your sit down restaurants um, into the area. Um, from my understanding, there was some previous commitments from some other um, restaurants and they decided because of the affordable housing uh, development that was approved um, that they backed out. So working with our new economic um, development director to market our city to be more attractive, to bring in those sit down restaurants and also more shopping to that downtown area um, where everyone wants to see. In addition to that, making sure that we are beautifying um, our downtown area and the existing businesses that are there that we're currently using the CRA money to make sure we're putting it back, putting back into local businesses that are currently there. And one of the challenges I want to one of the challenges is the a lot of businesses that I spoke to um, owners in the downtown area, they don't know how to access the CRA funds. So I think there needs to be some type of workshops that the city put together so they can understand how do they access those funds. So I just want to just make sure that we aren't leaving out the existing small businesses as a small business owner. It's really it's a lot of challenges when it comes to funding. And if there's local funding, we need to make sure that we're actually allocating those funding to the local businesses. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Richardson. Yeah, so, uh, you know, being on the street um, around Three Odd Guys Brewing, you know, we, you know, we, we took a of downtown. We, they, they actually, the city was able to finish a parking lot that was approved years ago. Um, so they finally finished that. So, you know, we got good and lots of parking. Um, but not much has changed in the last four years. You know, so, you know, we, we opened, uh, Propagate Social House opened, um, and that's it, right? You know, so one of the things that we have to ensure is that there's some synergy between what we want downtown to look like, go to surrounding like Park, uh, you know, even winter garden you know you, you see that all the buildings have a very similar color code they have a very similar look and feel that's welcoming it's inviting right now that's one of the bigger issues that we see here in our downtown areas is that we don't have that 
that look and feel. It's still the 60 years ago look and feel that it used to be. You know, so, you know, taking some of those uh, action items and, and making sure that, you know, we first have to make it an inviting location first, and then businesses will come. Um, you know, there is a proposed housing development for Station Street um, that, uh, you know, has a park, you know, could jumpstart some things. There's some questions about it, but, you know, as far as, uh, you know, it could be that jumpstart that it needs, you know, I, you know and, and we'll have to discuss this, but, you know, you have to start some Miller, Miller's Ale House is coming down here and we're going to the start working on getting other restaurants down too as well but you know working with the city working with external stakeholders that's what we have to do people that are experienced in doing this job and, and just to follow that up um there has been a tremendous amount of attention focused on downtown but um obviously this is a big city it's um it's orange county's second largest city and I'm sure that there are other parts of town that you believe are ripe for redevelopment that are not um, that are not not really being considered right now. If you can uh, tell me what area of the city should the city be looking at next? All right, and we'll start, Mr. Richardson. Yeah, uh, you know, so if you look at the entire. Uh, area where the CRA is, it was the CRA funds were were created so that businesses can reface or use some money that you know the city will will contribute uh, to put new shades on or uh, window treatments, paint, you know, all these things are are part of that the way that this money gets used. I mean, at Three Odd Guys, we use some of the money ourselves, you know, for signage and you know. You know, building our our facade as well, you know. But if it's inherent in people, if you if you ensure that they're proud and happy of the place that they live, they they're going to take some pride of ownership, right? So it starts with us, and you know who who sits at the city council to make the right decisions on you know where you're going, to, you know strategically plan each of these projects, you know, South of Pop, for instance, so much potential and, and there's so much passion for, for the homes that are down there and, and the businesses, you know, so, you know, the city could brighten it up, you know, it's already a new sidewalk uh, project going in, sidewalk plan going in, but, you know, there could be new street lights, there can be some beautification of the median areas, you know, putting plants and new grass and, you know, just, make it inviting when people drive through it and it's like, wow, this is really nice, you know, and, and you know, a pop is serene views and, and it just, it, it's a beautiful city and, and we're just not taking advantage of that, you know, and it seems like we just, sometimes we start a project and it never gets finished here. And that's one of the things that I'm running on is just to make sure if we start a project then we finish it, you know, that's one of the big things for me. Thank you. So there are a few areas. So now I think the Wild Oaks area. So in regards to the down to the current our current downtown area that we that has been a lot of discussion in regards to. I mean, if we just completely be really honest with ourselves, that area is almost you know pretty much landlocked. So to think that we're going to have a downtown Winter Garden field or the Winter Park field in that area, I just I don't realistically see that happening because there's not enough land to even make that happen. So I think we can actually beautify that area and bring in some businesses, but to get the downtown feel that I think most of the Apopka residents are looking for, we have to develop and look for another area to develop in. And what that looks like is we have the Wild Oaks area where that Willow Garden feel I think would be great. In addition to that, there's other areas in, in the Rock Springs Bridge area, the Rock, off the Rock Springs Bridge Road. There's a lot of areas over there that I think that we probably could look at putting a, a large um, sum of land together to try to develop that downtown field. In addition to that, also the Plymouth Sorrento area, there's some lands out on 441 where there's a large, last, a large mass of land that I think we also can utilize to look at. But I do think we do need to start having those conversations about other areas to develop in so we really can get that downtown field. We can kind of walk and have different restaurants and you know different 
you know, eateries and things so we can have that downtown feel that everybody wants. But I do think I want to make it very clear. I do think we need to finish developing our what's known now as our downtown area, but also looking at other areas to develop in as well um, to make sure that we have that feel that we're looking for. Um, I know that there are developers that have already purchased land. So we need to make sure that we're working with those developer, developers to make sure that we are developing smart. I want to be clear. I'm not saying that we need more development. I'm saying that we need to make sure that if we are going to develop, that we know exactly what it is that we want our city to look like and that we're developing smart. Thank you for that answer. I um, I had a quick question that was a little more general, but um, it, it's sort of a unique situation here with 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 two new candidates here with, who, who have no uh, specific council experience. And I wanted to know, what is it that, that you feel that you bring sort of on, on a specific level as a uh, as a new face and a new voice? How do you how do you fit into the current council once you win and, and, and once you take office? And Ms. Anderson, we'll start with you. OK, so I feel that I have a diverse background. Um, I worked in the social service field, in the private and public sector and working with private government. I mean, with public within the public sector um, of working with the federal government and the state government, I had a lot of experience dealing with different stakeholders in the community. So I understand how the government agencies work, not as a subcontract, but working directly with the federal government and directly with the state of Florida. So I feel with that experience, understanding how government contracting work, how government agencies work together with different municipalities, um, I have that experience. In addition to that, being a business owner of a large franchise that is, you know, throughout different states now, um, one of the largest growing um, franchises um, in the United States right now in regards to dessert brands, um, I have a unique background and experience with looking at how to one develop um, businesses in certain areas. Um, one of the things that we do when we look at developing, um, bringing our Jeremiah's into an area, we look at what is going on with the growth in that area. So with that experience of understanding how to know what growth looks like, to know how to develop in the path of growth, and to also engage the residents and different stakeholders within that growth to make sure that we are growing, growing and put, bringing things in the community that the community actually needs. Um, in addition to that, um, I have a really back, a, a, a background in social services. Um, I've worked in social services for years um, as a case manager uh, with DCF. Um, so I feel, and I know you put the white up, so I just feel that with my diverse experience, not only as a business owner, but also working in the public public sector um, with the federal government in the state of Florida, I feel that I have, I definitely have the skill set to make to add to the city council. Thank you for that. Mr. Richardson, uh, same question. So I've, I've been with city governments for 12, 16 years, uh, you know, with Longwood. Um, I was involved with, you know, even if you go back to where I was on the east side, where I was my HOA president, you know, so, it, you know, you take politics aside and just put your passion toward doing the right thing for the city, using common sense, fi finishing a project, you know, these are the things that a pop has been hurt and hurt by. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of discord on our uh, our city council right now. It doesn't seem like really get much gets done. I mean, one one thing I've always been able to pride myself is to bring people together and work as a team. Um, it, it's all. It's also my understanding that Orange County doesn't work with um, uh, the the city of Apopka very well. You know, so uh, it's going to take every involved as a city and as a as a county to to make the improvements that's needed to make a pop of what it can be um right now it's a it's a beautiful city but it has so much more potential that we're losing because of it, it just seems like people are just uh they're they're going in all these different directions and there's no strategic plan there's no that there's no what do we want to be when we grow up you know one of the things that I'm going to do here is to make sure that the, the, the team is brought together and, you know, we put the city on track to become what we all want it to be, which is a successful city. You know, uh, if you look at uh, even even Miss Anderson's business, you know, we're, you know, it, the city's success means she's going to be more successful than she is now, right? You know, so, uh, you know, every city can benefit from 
uh, the city being successful, right? But if you don't finish projects and if you can't work together as a team and you're always a, a left half or a right half of something, you know, and then all you end up doing is just disagreeing and, and the city becomes chaos, right? So I, I wanna just bring everything together and just you know, focus on the city's best interests and, and make sure that that works. You know, it's, let's just bring the city forward and forget about what happened in the past, right? That's what I wanna do. I'd like to ask a question. So um, I'm interested in, in each of you telling uh, us what motivated you to run in the first place? And is there a particular issue or um, or pet project that you'd like to work on that if you got that accomplished, you you think that would be um, a successful um, term? I'll start with you, Ms. Anderson. Oh, me again. That second time, me first. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Daryl's turn to go first. Okay, Daryl, you go ahead. There's a couple of projects that are on my website. Hopefully, you guys all went to it, uh, www.drichforapopka.com. Um, so the first thing, economic development. Uh, as a business owner here downtown uh, and on Fifth Street, four years ago, it looks the same as it did four years ago. Right. So I can't tell you if it looks any different. If it wasn't for 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 Arbury and um, Propagate to open, it would look the same as it did four years ago. You know, so again, it, it's fast tracking the economic development. And, you know, everybody talks about a strategic plan. You know, what, what are you going to do in three years, five years, 10 years? You know, so I have a plan to to build that. And, you know, it's going to take external, you know, sources who've done this in other cities. Look, nobody sitting on the city council knows everything, but everybody has a strength, right? Even the candidates, everybody has a strength, right? If, if even after the election, we should all be able to work together and and come together as 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 a team, you know. And you know, we've got a public safety issue. You know, our firemen have been fighting for a contract for the last year. You know, they're just now about to discuss if they're just going to bring that contract negotiation to the city council. And I'm 100% for that because it just needs to get done. We need they need to focus on on being the best fire department, police department, and and public utilities on the planet. You know, I'd rather for them to do that than worry about where their money is coming from. You know, um, and then fiscal transparency. You know, we've got money issues. I mean, you know, we just have to. You know, we got tons of money in the bank, but yet no no projects ever get finished. So I'm really not sure why the money doesn't get spent. You know, we worry about interest bearing checking accounts and where this money is building much interest. You know, people are screaming, they want stuff done, you know? So that was my motivation to run right there. It's just, let's just get something done, you know? Well, thanks for that. Uh, Ms. Anderson. Okay, so it was, so throughout my life, I've kind of followed local, you know, politics and I've always wanted to be involved in some way. Um, I've been involved locally here doing things in the community, but just not on a political le level. Um, I decided that I saw a lot of just one of the things that there are so just a lot of people just unhappy with kind of how things are going in the city. And I felt like uh, I would, would offer a fresh perspective and a non-biased opinion and with regards to the vote on city council. Um, I am the only candidate um, that has does not have any deep connections with anyone that's currently sitting on the city council. So I'm able to bring a fresh idea and not have be, be led by others' uh, um, opinion. I think that's really important. Um, and that kind of can help with making sure that we're bringing the city council together. In addition to that, uh, one of the things is that I know that from having a counseling agency, because I do have a counseling agency as well, uh, one of the things, um, a housing counseling agency, um, and one of the things that I see is that the need for workforce housing, when I say workforce housing, I mean your teachers, your firefighters, your your um, police officers, your nurses, um, because of the rise in interest rates and the rise of the home prices, there are not a lot of options for them to be able to afford housing. Um, one of the things um, that is important to me is making sure that just like Orange County um, has the city of Orlando have, the city of Apopka should have government funding for assistance to help with our working class um, Apopka residents. Um, and I feel like there is no one advocating for, honestly, that middle class. 
So for me, it's really important to make sure that the teachers have somewhere to stay because they're important. Our firefighters have someone to stay. We do ask that you keep your answers to about. Sorry. Okay. So okay. Is, I'll, I'll end it. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. We have we have we have a couple more questions okay. I'd love to ask you. And this is one of my favorite questions to ask. When you look at a popka today, what areas are you happiest to boast about? What what does Popka do better than any other city? We will start with Mr. Richardson. I think a popka, you know, what we do uh, Number one, if you just look at the sheer growth of Apopka, people want to live here. They want to, they, they do want to come here. And, and you know, we've grown our population by leaps and bounds. I mean, I, I, I believe it's the last picturesque city in Central Florida that has so many untapped natural areas, you know, like Lake Apopka, you know, you've got parks, you've got, you know, a small town home and feel, but it also has a lot of potential to be everything that the residents want it to be, you know? So, um, and I think we, I, it, it's a tough question because I, I think as a city, we want to keep all the serene beauty of the city, but there's certain factions and certain industry that wants to take that away from it, right? And I think all of us running for these, you know, four seats. I know us two are two seats. We want to keep that look and feel intact. I think all of us can agree also that we're we're all interested in the growth, um, as long as it's healthy, right? You know, like doing the right thing and not just tearing this city down and all the beauty of the city. Um, you know, so so we do a good job of, of building around certain things and making the city continue to look and feel like it like it used to. I, I do think we have too much history to to not uh, not remember that. Right. I, and, and, you know, Apopka's history is, you know, I mean, we were the potato capital now, the foliage capital. You know, we've got farm workers who built this this city and it's just I, I just think we just need to just continue the healthy growth and making sure that this the city's charm is still there i think that's really what we we do pretty well okay. so that's that, that that's a that's a pretty loaded question i mean that, that, that's a lot more than a one minute answer but yeah that, that would that would be my first thought is just make sure the look and feel is kept intact did you want to respond to that? What do you love, like to boast about, about Apopka? What Apopka does better than any other city? So kind of echoing the same thing Daryl said, and we can all feel that Apopka is the Springs. I love the Springs. I grew up as a little girl. I grew up in Zellwood. And every weekend we would go to Rock Springs and the Springs. I think that we have something unique here in Apopka that no one really has. And we have actually have, I mean, every day, um, growing up during the summer, uh, my family would get together and um, my mom owned a daycare and she would take her daycare center uh, kids there in the morning and they stay there for two hours. So it really means a lot to me making sure that we are protecting our springs and also our natural resources. Um, one of the things that is important to people, everyone I talk to, including myself, we love the small town farm of Kafka and we do not want to lose that. But how do we manage that with the growth? And that is a difficult conversation to have. Um, and I think it's important that collectively um, that we all once again figure out what is it we want a popka to look like. And we all have, I think the, everybody can agree we want a popka to still keep that small town charm. And how do we do that with the growth? And I think that's what's important to me is figuring out how do we keep that small town growth, um, small town charm with the growth in a popka. So I just love the charm of a popka. So thank you very much. I actually, to play off something that Mr. Richards, Mr. Richardson said, would like to ask, um, you know, we've seen tremendous changes in Apopka over the last three decades or so. Um, and one of them is that the population has become much more diverse. Is the city doing an adequate job in providing services in Spanish and other languages? 
And um, let's start with Ms. Anderson. So one of the things that's in absolutely, so in regards to diverse population of POPCA, um, about five years ago, I noticed that the services was not offered in, in Spanish and Creole uh, for the my home buying um, services. So what I, my home buying services class. So what I did was I implemented a Spanish speaking home buyer education class. So that way the Spanish population can get that, uh, get the information and also get that certification need for down payment assistance. In addition to that, um, I think that APOPCA needs to make sure, in regards to the city council, even the meetings, um, there should be some form of interpretation um, for different, like, I know we can't get it right with all the different languages, that's not possible, but definitely Spanish, because more than 30% of our population, from my understanding, don't quote that number, but I want to say it was around 30% the last time I looked, is, in, is Spanish, Spanish speaking. So I think there needs to be some type of um, Spanish speech and interpretation when it comes to the city council meetings so they can know what's going on. In addition to that, there needs to be some type of uh, version, Spanish speaking version on the website, on the Apopka website as well. Um, I think that we need to make, in addition to that, in regards to the uh, migrant workers, um, making sure that we are, you know, working with that community to make sure that they have the services that they need. Mr. Richardson, same question about the provision of services in Spanish and other languages. Right. I, I don't think the city does hardly anything to help with the diversity of Apopka. Um, I mean, if you look at where South Apopka is, very little changes have ever been made there in decades. I mean, at least none that could be like heralded as, oh, this is groundbreaking or changing. You know, it, it's hard for me to sit here as, you know, me, a Caucasian male and and think that I can understand the plights of the undocumented migrants or or the, the 40, 50 year old, uh, you know, year people, residents of South Apopka and understand this. What I have done is reached out to the historians of Apopka to understand, you know, why, why people's discourse toward the government is you know, the city government is what it is, right? So it starts with understanding. Right? And the only way you can do that is listen. Right? I've, you know, one, one, again, I'll, I'll go back to something that I listen, listen to people a lot, right? And I analyze a lot of things to what they say. And then the decisions that are made are based on the feedback and the anal analysis of what you just listened, right? You know, so you can, you can make conclusions of, what your decision is, is going to impact a greater diverse population to attract all cultures, races, creeds, right? You know, for me, I just, I just want to make sure that the, that everybody has the same communication level, which we don't have today. Thank you very much. Uh, and it, I, um, had one more question I wanted to ask you, and it's a question that you've been asked at every single forum. Um, the city is one of the few that still has a strong mayor form of government. Is it time to, to change that? And, um, and we will start with uh, Mr. Richardson. You know, I've, I've, I've said this multiple times already on pretty much every time we get, we get asked this question. That decision is way bigger than five people sitting up on the dais inside of a city council, right? The, the, the decision to move forward is 100% I'm for moving forward with an, uh, an, uh, an election. Uh, it could be a special election, but most likely it'll be backed on another election, uh, maybe then either the November vote or the next mayoral uh, election in two years. This it, is not a quick process. I mean, to change the charter from something that you built, you know, 80 years ago, you know, it's just, it's just not something you just change overnight. You know, I mean, if, if there are elements in the city that want to get rid of a strong mayor form of government, because they don't like the mayor, <laughs> you're going to, it's going to be faster for them to reelect a new mayor, right? So use the vote that you have to make that change. Now, 
is it better or worse or indifferent? There are different levels of city government where a strong mayor works, right? I mean, the smaller cities, the larger cities, uh, you know, all of these if you're a larger city, you have the budget and you have the resources, right? You can hire those second level administrators to run all these different departments. But in the smaller cities, you have to overlap jobs. You know, the police, the police guy might be running three different jobs, you know, or the city um, utilities manager might be doing four different jobs, you know, at that administrative level, you know, so, but when you get into that middle, you know, where the, you don't have the money for all these levels of people, but you also need more experience in the city, Again, again, it, it, the people need to make this decision, and this is this this has to go to a vote, right? Um, I, I can't say I'm for it or against it, right? I'm a resident of the city, and I would vote. I would use my vote based on the election, you know. But it, the the people need to vote on this. Miss Anderson, thank you so much. We definitely have been asked this question at several times, and in regards to how I would vote, I think that's the question in regards to that. Um, we, there are disadvantages and advantages of a strong mayor form of government and also the city uh, manager um, form of government. Um, one of the challenges um, that I see in regards to here in Apopka is the strong mayor form of government usually is only good as the person that's currently in that seat. If you have a city, a, a, an attorney, a, a mayor that understands government, understand business and understand how to secure funding, and, and run a city, then that form of, of government is good. However, if you get a mayor who doesn't know absolutely anything about how to run run a government, how to run a city, then you run into the problem of, of you know, some things in my, from my understanding that's kind of happened, happened in the past. So to make sure that something like that doesn't happen and to make sure that our city council members also have a voice when it comes to making decisions, um, at this time, I'm leaning more towards more for the city manager form of government um, I think once more language come out um, from the charter review, I can make a definite decision. But based off of the size of Apopka, and Apopka is growing. I mean, we can't, I think the strong mayor form of government is really good when you have a really small, small city. But when the city grows, grow, as large as our city is growing, um, we are getting more money in our budget because our city is growing. I think that we are doing the right thing by looking at changing our form of government or looking at options to change that form of government. We all are aware that the residents do vote. But however, for that to be on the ballot, we have to vote for that first in order for that to be on the ballot. Thank you very much. Um, well, we are just about out of time, um, but I want to know, did, did anybody else have a question that they wanted to ask? Yeah. Okay, well, um, what I'm going to do is just kind of wrap this up and then give you both a chance to make a closing statement. Um, we we do intend to make an endorsement in this race, but there is so much other information out there. We really urge voters to take the time, research these candidates, because in Apopka, these choices become very important in the way we live our daily lives. And with, with that, um, we are going to invite both, um, both of our candidates to make a closing statement. Um, and uh, Ms. Anderson, uh, of, of not more than two minutes, Ms. Anderson, would, I'd like to start with you and just tell our voters why they should pick you. Okay. I'd like to first thank Orlando Sentinel for offering us this form and the chance to actually speak to your readers. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that one of the things is that I am a, just a quick synopsis, I am a mom, I'm a business owner, I am a, I went to a Popka High School, a Popka Middle School, so I've been in the area for a while, I'm a native of the area, so I do understand um, the growth in a Popka, I've been involved in the growth of a Popka all my life. In addition to that, um, I have a strong um, background in owning a business, in addition to that, working with the federal uh, federal state and local governments. Um, another thing is, I just think it's important that we understand that we are providing the residents with the field everyone's looking for, a work, live, and a place to uh, raise our families. I think that's all the residents really want. They want a place where they can work here, play here, and also enjoy the amenities here in Apopka and not have to leave Apopka to do that. 
all while making sure that we remain our taxes remain low. Um, one of the challenges have been for our seniors um, that are on a fixed income with the new development coming into the area is causing property taxes to increase. So make sure that we are protecting um, our current residents to make sure that the property taxes does not increase. That's really important because especially with affordability. In addition to that, um, I want to make sure that just bringing the city back to bring our city council back together. There have been so much divisiveness and people just not getting along. I want to be that be that glue to help bring everyone back together. I think with my experience being on different boards, national and also local, that I have the skill set and I also have the experience to do that. Um, so electing me as your next city city three seat commissioner. Um, you're electing someone that has a track record of one have serving the community, also a track record of working with local government. And I think that it's, it's, it's important um, to when you're analyzing a candidate to see exactly what have they done prior to running for office. Have they been involved in the community? I think it's important to see that it's not important to be a voice for the community when you're running for office, but have you been a voice for the community prior to running for office? And I definitely have been a voice for the community prior to running for office. Thank you. Mr. Richardson, would you like to share your presentation? Yeah. First off, Chris, I appreciate you reaching out and the Orlando Sentinel for the um, Look, it, it, elected officials have, have lost, you know, have forgotten two things, right? Why they were elected and who elected them, right? It, uh, most elective officials, if you look at the, the opinion of people, is that they're very self-serving and the voice doesn't ever get heard you know so i am running to be the voice of the people you know there's lots of things that get said and lots of things that get implied but all i can say is you know, when you're looking at things when you're reading things just make sure you fact check it you know there's uh, there's a lot of claims out there that get that, that get made that they're just simply not true um, or they're very inflated you know, but i'm not that person what you hear from me is what you hear, what you see, what you get, right? I want to be a voice of the people. I want to be the megaphone of the people. And I want to make sure that they have a voice sitting on that city council so that if somebody comes to me and they ask me a question, I want to address that question immediately. You know, I want to answer their emails. I want to, my, my phone is always there. My door is always open, you know, so, and, and we don't have that type of city officials or elected officials today. You know, if you look at the state federal level, you know, which I've sold into for the last 25 years, I know their processes, I know their procedures. I've sold into every different level of the city and the state and the and the federal government. You know, I know what they do and I know how much they push things back and kick the can down the road, which is what we have to stop. If we're ever going to move forward, we have to stop it. You know, so I am going to be that voice of the people and I'm going to do the best I can to make sure that that. Uh, not only does Apopka succeed, but it also progresses into a community where everybody's proud and everybody has a voice. And it doesn't matter what your creed or your race or your sexual orientation is. We're going to make sure that everyone has a voice. And I appreciate you guys for doing this. So thank you very much. Thank you both. Um, and we look forward to, to, um, to, to election day and early voting is going on right now. And uh, I wish you both the best of luck.